Hello everyone and thank you for joining me yet again. This is the 19th talk in my series on theological discussions and the title of this talk, this discussion is Community. This is the final talk in my series and I thank you very much for joining me along this journey. I shall continue putting out videos once a week but the videos that I shall put out in the future shall not be a part of a series. Each video shall not lead on to another video, but rather each video shall be in itself a separate entity. And I look forward to each one of you joining me in the future for future videos. Sorry that I look a little bit scruffy at the moment. I'm a little bit scruffy and shaggy looking, but... I'm actually on holidays at the moment, so I'm sort of, you know, a bit relaxed in holiday mode. But anyway, let's, let's continue this video. Community. The church has always thrived when it meets basic needs, when it sees an avenue, an area that needs attention, and when it provides that attention. Examples of this are schools and hospitals. The church has done very, very well when it comes to education and when it comes to health care. The church has provided a great service to humanity throughout the world and continues to do this right now, here and now as I speak. Every town, every city in the developed world and in many developing nations have a hospital or a school founded by the church. When the church serves society, society in turn serves the church. The church first serves and then society in turn serves the church. I'll repeat this statement again. When the church serves society, society in turn serves the church. The church first serves, and then society in turn serves the church. This is actually quite a true statement. When we reflect upon it, we see its truth. The church must first take the initiative the church must begin serving and in turn people will become members of the church and will in turn serve the church. People cannot be forced into service. Rather, people find themselves serving because they want to. Um, people begin serving the church because they, they want to serve the church, because they see that the church is relevant in today's world. Tomorrow's church must yet again find areas where it can serve once more. Schools and hospitals are great. Schools and hospitals are big and huge um, infrastructure um, created and established by the church throughout the world. But the church must find other areas where it can serve so that the church may go through a process of, um, of renewal so that others may, may find the joys found in serving. It is, it's easy for the church to serve the poor in far away places, but the church must too serve the poor in developed nations as well because these nations are the contributors of much of the church's funds now the poor in far far away places are very very easy to serve because they are in much need in much need and the church basically provides them with um, you know monetary needs and and so forth. Although much, much more is needed, the church does contribute towards much 
of the world's um, you know poverty and needs. The church must, however, um, serve the poor within the developed world also. And who are the poor within the developed world? Who are poor people within um, developing within developed nations? I should say, some of these nations are Australia, Canada, America, United Kingdom, for example, Europe. Who who are the poor within the developed world? Well, the poor within the developed world um, are people who are not necessarily um, economically poor, but spiritually poor. Um, people who, who, who do not know the, um, the, the joy of Christ, um, the joy found in loving Christ, the joy found in, in believing in Christ. These could also be people who, um, who are lonely, who, um, who don't um, feel the comfort of family and friends, of support, who do not have support networks within their lives. Imagine if we had a church community that was accepting of all kinds of people. Imagine if we had a church community that had leadership roles for women. Imagine if we had a church community that allowed everyone to be themselves and did not confuse being a good person with simply not having any fun. Imagine if we had a church community where people felt loved and wanted. Now, these are the sort of things that the church needs to address in the developed world. Um, in the developed world, these are very much the things that the church needs to address. The church of the future must very much focus on community. The community of the church, the community of the church of the future must very much be looked at and dealt with if the church is to flourish and grow once more, not only in the developing world, but in the developed world at, as well. If you like this video, please hit the like button below. Share this video with as many people as you can. Add a comment or two down below. And I would like each and every one of you to subscribe to my channel. And I believe all of us together can do great things for God.